Tonight, new concerns inside the U.S. defense community over a Russian military satellite exhibiting some very strange behavior. Our Brian Todd is on the story for us. Brian, why are officials keeping an eye on this particular piece of equipment? It's very interesting. It is, Jim. They're doing that because this satellite seems to have done something that U.S. officials admit they have never seen before. It has birthed two other satellites, according to experts, and they're worried the Russians could use it as a weapon in space. Blasting off from a Russian Cosmodrome, a Soyuz rocket surges into space. Its payload, a military satellite shrouded in mystery. That was in June of last year. Tonight, space and military analysts are investigating whether that satellite is the same one which a top U.S. arms control official said this week was exhibiting, quote, abnormal behavior. When you look at the entire Russian catalog, this satellite and, and its, uh, its children are the ones that, that jump out as the ones that are uh, acting in an unusual way. The satellite's children? Experts at the firm Analytical Graphics, who've analyzed this satellite, believe the larger Russian satellite, quote, birthed a smaller satellite a couple of months later. Then, a couple of months after that, the smaller Russian satellite birthed an even smaller satellite. Almost like a Russian nesting doll. The Russian Ministry of Defense even announced the first birthing, saying the smaller satellite would, quote, inspect the condition of the larger one. But experts are worried the Russians could be testing it out for military purposes. The fact that it's the MOD announcing it, the, the Ministry of Defense announcing that, and it's a secret mission, clearly that's, even if it's a test satellite, it, it's got some kind of military purpose in what it's testing. What kind of military purpose? The Pentagon and U.S. Air Force Space Command won't say specifically what they believe the Russian satellites could do. But tonight, a U.S. military official tells CNN the Russians and other adversaries have turned space into a, quote, warfighting domain. You could see the evolution of that technology in that a single satellite could then sort of give birth to multiple smaller satellites, which would principally be potentially kinetic weapons. Of course, we're thinking later on to the future. This possible threat is one reason why the Trump administration has been pushing so hard for a so-called space, space force. Space force. U.S. military officials have told CNN the Russians have already developed a satellite called Cosmos 2499. They've nicknamed it Kamikaze because they say it could at some point have the capability to go on the attack and slam into American satellites. Experts say the Russians could use satellites to jam American satellites, intercept or disrupt crucial communications. A lot of our uh, image surveillance reconnaissance means are space-based, so it's really more a uh, United States ability to see in support of its forces that potentially threaten. The Russians are flatly denying the U.S. assertion that they're trying to weaponize satellites. The same unfounded, slanderous accusations based on suspicions, on suppositions, and so on and so forth. In denying that they have weaponized satellites, the Russians are again pressuring the Americans to join a treaty that would ban weapons in space. The U.S. government has resisted joining that treaty, saying there's no way to verify that Russia and China are curtailing their weapons, and U.S. officials say the treaty has too many loopholes to allow those countries to actually build their weapons capability. Jim, looks like we have a genuine arms race in space going on right now. America in the crosshairs. A new report from the Pentagon says that China is actively developing its fleet of long-range bombers and likely training its pilots for missions over the U.S. Joining me now, CNN military and diplomatic analyst, retired Rear Admiral John Kirby. Uh, this is alarming because Ch China's been making military moves for some time to, right. to expand its military power and influence abroad. What do we see in this report? This report, I think, makes clear that they have continued that process, that, that, that they, are, they view the first two decades of this century as an era of strategic opportunity to expand and develop what they call their comprehensive national power. This report lays out some very specific examples of how they're doing that. So let's take a look at them. They're giving the Chinese Air Force now a nuclear mission, the ability to arm bombers, as you said, uh, Jim, with nuclear missiles that can actually go as far and perhaps be as accurate as to attack uh, U.S. targets. Um, they're, again, that's the, for the training of their pilots. They're also modernizing the People's Liberation Army to be able to conduct complex joint and out of area operations, something we've not seen the Chinese Army because able to do. Uh, until this point, they'd focused their attention on their borders and, and the immediate surroundings. So now they, they right. want to be able to project, project power where the U.S. is dominant. Exactly. It's not just about area dominance now, it's power projection in an expeditionary way out of area and across the globe. 
Also, in, in keeping with that, they're expanding their ring of bases. So we've talked about the bases in the nine dash line in the, in the sphere of influence they're creating in the South China Sea, but they're also now trying to contract for and build bases in countries around the world, Pakistan, Djibouti. They really want a more robust global footprint. A new report says that Russia and China are stepping up activity in the North Atlantic. This has the Navy looking for ways to prepare and counter this movement. Earlier this year, the U.S. military announced a new strategy to counter China and Russia. Much of this strategy is classified, but Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov called the approach confrontational. For more, we're joined by former Brigadier General Anthony Tata, author of the book Dark Winter, coming out this October. Thank you for joining us, General. Great to be here. General, how credible are these reports about Chinese and Russian activity? I think they're very credible. I think we have excellent intelligence that uh, feeds into the National Command Authority. And when you look at uh, President Trump's uh, national defense strategy, uh, the document is very clear, highlighting that Russia and China are peer competitors that uh, we need to take more seriously. And when you think about the uh, containment and destruction of ISIS and other uh, radical Islamic threats around the world as we have ramped up our activity to try to defeat and destroy those forces. Uh, it's now time to refocus on threats uh, such as China and Russia that have capabilities from nuclear to cyber to uh, very conventional uh, fleet forces. And when you think about what's happening with the United States uh, reactivating its second fleet uh, in, in, uh, to, to compete in the North Atlantic, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, waterways, there's minerals, there, there's, there are several reasons that uh, the United States needs to be able to contest these waters that uh, you know, Russia and China are being very aggressive about patrolling, and the Navy's job is to extend American power and to compete uh, on the high seas. Well, how different is this compared to events from 10 to even 15 years ago, uh, considering that President Trump has always had leadership by strength? Is that a sort of a change in doctrine and military strategy from what we saw maybe back in, in the late 90s, uh, maybe even early 80s? Well, I think you know. I think President Reagan, uh, you know, increased the Navy uh, by hundreds of ships. So uh, that that was the original uh, piece through strength, uh, you know, within our recent memory. And now I think President Trump is bringing that back. What we saw under the Clinton era, and even under uh, the the Bush era, and, and particularly under the Obama era, uh, were, were uh, you know, w we cut defense just as frequently and often as we could, and particularly under the Obama eight years. Uh, President Obama's strategy was a weaker America makes for a stronger world. And so now what President Trump has is, uh, you know, we just signed a, a seven, uh, $711 billion Defense Authorization Act uh, that uh, helps uh, beef up our defenses from everything from space to, to naval to cyber to ground forces. And, and so we're entering a new era where uh, we are trying to uh, once again, focus on our conventional forces that uh, compete on the ground and sea. And, and this is just part of that strategy that is very clearly articulated in the national defense strategy. It's not uh, a, a secret at all uh, that uh, we see, the U.S. sees China and Russia as our peer competitors. Well, before I let you go, I have to ask you, do you feel like the U.S. has stepped up its military activity in the South China Sea and the Black Sea uh, in regards to the Navy? Uh, so what I see going on right now is that we're we are uh, continuing to try to keep the shipping lanes open. That that's it's a very clear mission that the Navy has, and uh, the the where we compete with China and Russia is where we need to be, and and keeping those shipping lanes open uh, is crucial to uh, American commercial success and and uh, military success and and peace throughout the world. Because there are other countries all around the world that rely on those shipping lanes. Well, thank you, General. We wish you much success with your upcoming book.